First Kings chapter two, we've looked at Adonijah trying to assert the authority over the government taken care of. He's put to death. We see Abiathar being removed from the priesthood. And then later in the middle of the chapter, we see Zadok set up. We see a murderer in peacetime, Joab of Abner and Amasa. He's put to death. And we come to another man named the king sent, verse 36. And the king sent and called Shimei. Now the story of Shimei, 2 Samuel 16, is when David's on the run from uh, Absalom, distraught, broken, his kingdom has been taken over by his son. He doesn't know who to trust. He's on the run. He's running to the Jordan River, running away. And all the family, he's upset. And on the way in the land of Benjamin, Shimei comes up. He starts cursing at David and his men. He starts throwing stones at David and his men. He's cursing David for blaming David for the, for the blood that was shed for Saul. Which we know David had nothing to do with the death of Saul. And the sons of Zeruiah, Joab, and them, they want to take off his head. And David's like, no, just, just leave him alone. Let him do. Maybe God will bless us. Just got to get out of here. It's trouble. And I don't need this trouble. I don't need Shimei. We're just going to move on. And Shimei, again, he curses David. David goes off. And Absalom is killed. The kingdom has been taken away from Absalom. David crosses the Jordan River on the ferry boat. Judah's about to bring him back, to bring back the king. David's returning. And he's still, I mean, he's had nothing but great ordeals in his life. Running from Saul, running from Absalom. And one of the few first people that come up after David crosses the Jordan River, and guess who? Shimei. Oh, I'm sorry, King. I'm sorry, David. I didn't really mean that. What, what, they, and I wonder what Shimei would have done if David never came back as king. What if David stayed on the other side of the Jordan River? But the fact is, here comes David. Here comes the king. The people want him as king. And Shimei, you know what? He's repenting, but he's repenting because he's caught. Not because he's sorry. So now we pick up the king, Shimei, and David tells Shimei right then and there, he says, listen, go home. I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to do nothing with you. I don't even know if I'm king. You just go home. And he laid an oath of the Lord upon Shimei, I'm not going to kill you. Solomon is made king. And one of the things that David tells Solomon before David dies is, Shimei. And you know that whole ordeal that your brother Absalom and everything and how we left and you know the whole circumstance. And I by an oath of God told Shimei I'm not going to kill him. But Solomon you're a wise son. Take care of him. And then we pick up in verse 36 of chapter 2 of 1 Kings. And the king sent and called Shimei. There they are. The son of David and Shimei. And said unto him, Build thee an house in Jerusalem. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to be in a city now. You're going to be here. All your supplies are needed. Now, we don't know what kind of background, farmer, whatever Shimei was in Benjamin. But you're going to be in this city. You're going to be Shimei where I can keep my eye on you. I don't trust you. Here in this city, you build a house. And dwell there. Don't you rent it out. You stay in that house in Jerusalem. And go not forth thence any whither. Don't you leave. 
Now, what Solomon is setting up is, is a kind, but it's not, because Jerusalem is not a city of refuge, but it's kind of a refuge city here. Now, Shimei is not a murderer, but kind of, kind of like protective custody. You're here, you're going to stay here, we're going to keep an eye on you, you can't go nowhere. Don't even try to go anywhere. And with Shimei, he's a man that is, uh, I was going to say bondman, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Um, he's got to report to a parole officer. Everything Shimei I has to do, he has to report, and he cannot leave. How's the rest? But <laughs> Jerusalem, <laughs> there's the temple, there's the kingdom, there you are, Shimei. For it shall be, Solomon's through speaking, that on the day thou goest out, when you leave Jerusalem and passes over the book Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. How important is surely die? Shall we go to Genesis chapter 2? Genesis 2. Genesis 2, verse 17. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Sound familiar? That's what we just read. Genesis 3, verse 6. And the woman, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. God said, Thou shalt surely die. Don't you do it. The wages of sin is death. Now Adam did not die that day, but he died. Genesis 5. Shimei is going to violate, and he's going to die. When we preach on the streets, we tell people, if you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. That's surety. And many people will not listen. They will not obey God. Adam didn't obey God. Shimei is not going to obey the king. Thy blood, back to first king, shall be upon thy own head. So listen, Shimei. You stay here. By the orders of the king of Israel and Judah, you stay here. And if you go, and when you are executed for not obeying me, it will be on your head, not mine. The law prescribes a Jew to obey God and the king and the priest. And she may I say unto the king, the, th the saying is good. Oh, okay, I agree with you. As my lord the king has said, so will thy servant do. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. Okay, king, I agree with you. Went and built a house, and he lived in Jerusalem many days. He obeyed. There's many days that Adam didn't Go against the word of God. But one day, he ate the fruit. Let's find out about Shimei. And it came to pass at the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Achish, the son of Makkah, king of Gath. I don't know all these things. You can fire me down, you can blast me down, but I'm trying the best I can. They're probably not how the way you pronounce them. 
And they told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants be in Gath. Okay. Stop right there. Shimei has got servants where, where he's living now. Two of them, we don't know how many, but two of them take off. They go into the land of Philistine. Philistine, Jerusalem. Gath. Jerusalem, they are not the same city. Nowhere near, it's a lot of miles between those two cities. You see, you see where we're gonna go now? I forgot where I was. And Shimei, verse 40, arose and saddled his ass and went to Gath to Achish he left Jerusalem. What is supposed to happen when he left Jerusalem? Was he allowed to leave Jerusalem? And when those people that got an audio only, I'm shaking my head no. He left. Three years later, he leaves. A direct violation of the king and his orders. Romans 13 says we are to obey the powers that be. Now that Peter says in the book of Acts, there's only one power, there's only one rule that we are to disobey when it comes to the government. If what the government says goes against what the Bible says. Now, if the government of the United States of America told me I can't preach and I can't witness no more, the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. I'm to obey God, and the, and the government punishes me, well, then that has to be. Now, the government says that on a particular road, I can go no faster than 35 miles per hour. And that cop pulls me over for doing 36 miles per hour. That cop has all right, the government has all right to write me that speeding ticket. I was at, no matter what I think, no matter what I care, no matter what I do, if I go over 35, I'm guilty. And God would say, Romans 13, you should have done 35. King Solomon, nothing against the word of God, nothing against Jehovah. You build a house here, you stay here, you don't leave. There's nothing up in the law or anything that King Solomon violated anything in Shimei. Shimei after, Shimei, after three years, his servants leave. They go to Gath. Shimei shows up in Gath. That's not Jerusalem. And Shimei rose and saddled his ass and went to Gath Achish to seek his servants. And Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. So he came back to Jerusalem. He's in Jerusalem. See, I'm in Jerusalem. And that's what many a man do. They play with sin. Well, see, you know. Sin is sin. I don't care. He's back in Jerusalem. Solomon told him not to leave. And we'll see more as we go on. And the king sent, I mean, and it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and was come again. Someone's always going to tell on you. Like it or not, somebody's going to report to you, did you see what he's doing? Did you see that? Do you know what they did? Guess what? I got a secret. Did you know? Oh, man. I, 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 you could write a book on how the people start on these gossip. And it may be true. This is true. This is a true statement. Hey, King, Jimmy, I left, and he's back. No lies. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make thee swear by the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah, the God of all gods? So verse 37, 38, Solomon tells us, Shimei, you're going to make an oath that's higher than my throne. You're going to make an oath by the God that sits on the throne. <laughs> Excuse me. Between the mercy seat, before Jehovah, you swear today 
now you're going to settle in Jerusalem and you're not going to leave Jerusalem. The saying's good. As my Lord the King has said, so will thy servant do. And what did he do? He left. There's a lot of oaths of people out there that they made to God. And they have not fulfilled them. I've talked to a few people lost and then saved. Tell me about their times in, in uh, Vietnam. They promised God everything. And have not fulfilled. You make an oath to God. Solomon writes much about it in Proverbs. And he could ask you. About opening your big fat mouth. Matthew 12. Every idle word man shall give an account thereof. Everything you say. Every stupid little joke. Every little tiny word. Stuff that did not need to be said will be judged. Did it really need to be said? Be careful your little jokes. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make thee swear by the Lord? All capitals, that's Jehovah. And protest. <laughs> not only did, did the king say, Listen, don't you do this, but I, don't you do this. Well, Shimei, I'm telling you. You better not. You ought not. <laughs> Anything not, don't. And you got to wonder, sometimes within that three years, you know, Shimei and Solomon are passing out. You stay. You're not going to go anywhere, are you? They meet at the temple, at the holiday. You still here? Protest. We got that word all wrong today, protesting. We protest against this, we protest against that, we protest against these and that. We don't progress against sin. On the day saying, no for a certain. On the day that thou goes out. Something like Solomon knew he was going to. And walketh abroad any with it. Wherever you go. I don't care if you're walking that line of Jerusalem. The bordering line. You cross that line. You know, draw the, the line in the sand. You cross that line. Anywhere. I would think Gath is anywhere with her. That thou shalt surely die. Now look, Solomon's quoting what he quoted, what he said to Shimei. Solomon is quoting himself. And thou sayest unto me, now he's going to quote Shimei. The word that I have heard is good. So in the oath of God, you said, oh, it's good. I'm going to do it, king. So help me God or whatever. Why then hast thou not kept the oath of the Lord? Not, not the oath of me, the king. The oath of God, our king. Our God. The God of my father, the God of me. Your God. You lied to God, Shimei. Now that's the wisdom of Solomon. There we go. Now, David had already told Shimei by an oath of God, I'm not going to put you to death. Now, Solomon could have done that. But that would be playing on uneven ground. What was the wisdom of Solomon? I am going to make you set an oath by God. A reasonable oath that, hey, you're in this city. Everything you need is in this city. You stay in this city, you don't go anywhere else. You like taking someone in Iowa and say, listen, we're going to put you in Dallas. We're going to put you in some major city in America. Now, you may not have cows walking across, but you can get hamburger. There are stores in Jerusalem to get what you need. There are markets on the street to get what you need. There are temples right there. You do not have to say, well, I can't go. I, I have to leave because i got to go to the temple. There are temples right there, Jimmy. I. I am right there too, keeping my eye on you. So 
So that's where Solomon and his wisdom got him. He got a man that went against the oath of God, lied to God. What was one of the commandments? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not take the Lord, the, the name, the name of the Lord in vain. Oh, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and you did that in the oath of God, and you lied about that. That's taking God's name in vain. That's the wisdom of Solomon. That's how he gets Shimei. Shimei wasn't a murderer like Joab. Joab outright killed two men in peace with no reason. Adonijah was killed for usurping the authority of the government, trying to have a military coup and this outright rebellion. He died for that. Abiathar, you, you were my father. You went through the affliction. You went through the troubles. Just get out of here. Because the prophecy says that of Eli's family, you're out. You're just out. Get out of here. Go. Now, Shimei, you cursed my father. You wanted his stone and his troops. You violated the government, Romans 13. Though Romans 13 wasn't writ yet, written yet, but for Christians. You're a big fat mouth of ranking on and making fun of any official. If you don't like them or not, Democrat, Republican, or whatever independent party they are, Greenpeace, I don't care. When you go against the government, it is a sin and it is a crime in the Bible. We're told to pray for our leaders. We're told to minister to them. We're told to, sorry, every said pray. Pray for them again. Pray to witness to them. Not to bad mouth them. Solomon said that a bird of the air will go tell the matter. You wonder why Washington, D.C. won't get saved? There's no big revival because the big fat mouth Christians are making fun of them all. And they know Baptist churches don't like them and calling them names. Why would they get saved? Call hypocrites. You don't like it? That's tough. It's the Bible. Romans 13. Read it. Memorize it. Realize God has put him into office. Even Satan puts him in office. Job 1 and 2. God allows Satan to do it. Why then hast thou not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I have charged thee with? Alright, so, Simeon, you violated God. You lied to God. You ready? Simeon, you did not obey the government, me as the king. That's a crime. As I said already, if that cop pulls me over and I'm doing 36 and a 35 mile per hour, that's my fault. I'm guilty. It's one mile over. It's 35, 36. They're not the same. I have no right to go in a courtroom and say, oh, I'm not guilty. I have the right to write the check or put my, my numbers in there and send it off and say, i got to pay for it. Simeon, Solomon has set him up that he lied against God and he rebelled against the government. The king told him to do something and he did not. Now, like I said before, Peter says in, in uh, the book of Acts, if you make a law that goes against what God has said, I got to obey God and take the consequences of the government. That's 35 miles per hour speeding. That's nothing wrong with that. If I went cry by boo, God, they gave me a ticket, and God be like, hey, you deserved it, idiot. Can't you read 35? People boo-hooing to me. Paul says, if I be guilty of death, I refuse not to die. And yet the government says, do not preach that gospel. Do not bring that Jesus here. Do not bring that Bible. Don't speak about, don't witness. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And if I'm going to do what God tells me to do, if I suffer consequences as they did in the book of Acts, well, then I got to do it. That law of not preaching would violate the Bible. The speed limit. Is not violation of the Bible. 
Simeon stay and remain in Jerusalem is not, is not a violation of the law that we have so far where we are. I told you, Solomon is protecting him. He's got him into a, a kind of city of refuge, but it's not the city of refuge. He's not a murderer. And like I said, he's in protective custody. This might be the first time you have a parole officer in the Bible. He would, I don't, it doesn't say, but maybe Jimmy has to report to somebody for Solomon all the time. Maybe it was his parole officer. Hey, he didn't come in today. Well, where'd he go? Well, let me make some connections by now. I found out he went to Gap. He's back now, King. Wouldn't that be interesting? The king said, moreover to Shimei, thou knowest all the wickedness of thy heart, not head. We read in Jeremiah, we read in the song, I mean, uh, uh, the, the Gospels, Jesus speaking. Uh, I think it's Galatians. We talked about the fruits of the Spirit just before that. It says, lasciviousness, lying, theft, adultery, fornication, murders, and all the mean, nasty, wicked sins. Are done in the heart and we have been revealed by Solomon that Shimei is a wicked man he's wicked in his heart maybe he don't go to the temple maybe he's one of those Pharisees that goes and still wicked thou knowest all the wickedness which thy heart is privily to there's things even we don't know about you Shimei your thoughts. What are you thinking? Do you realize thoughts will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ? What people think and their ideas will be judged at the great white throne judgment? Christian, you better put those thoughts under the blood of Jesus Christ. We all think them. We all have those moments. Child, if, if by chance if there's a child listening to this, and you got upset with your parents and you were in that bed, that room closed, and you saying everything nasty and wicked about your parents, you better put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Privily. That means your parents don't know. Your wife doesn't know. Your husband doesn't know. Your pastor doesn't know. Your children don't know. Your parents don't know. But God knows. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil as first. And the good. We do evil first before we do good. That's our heart nature. That thou didst to David, my father. This is how all started, Shimei. Therefore, the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thy own head. It's your fault. You didn't obey. You went after my dad. You did all that. You're guilty. And King Solomon shall be third person now. King Solomon, I have. I have, uh, I heard, no, wait, I have charged thee with, thou knowest all the wickedness. The king said, now King Solomon shall be blessed. It's third person. And the subject matter is, when I put you to death, when I execute you, Simei, God will approve of it and God will establish my kingdom. This country has not put to death the murderers who have been through two or three, if not more, trials to found that they are guilty by a judge, by a jury, and still sit in luxury of cable TV, protection, comfort of AC and heating and meals, even if it's a bologna sandwich. It's still a lot more than what homeless vets are getting on the street. That's not what the Bible prescribes. My kingdom will be established and blessed by God when I put you to death, Simeon. Whatever you think, whatever you want to do, whatever, I don't care. It's what, it's what the Bible says. And you'll stand before the word in God one day. King Solomon shall be blessed in the throne of David. That's the throne of Jesus Christ. It's actually, right now, it's the throne of Solomon. But the sure mercy of David that God promised to David is that upon that throne that you sit, will Jesus Christ sit one day? 
Luke chapter 2. Mary, or the one, one or two. Mary, Gabriel says, you're going to give birth to a son. You're going to name him Jesus, and he's going to sit on his father's throne, David. That throne is Jesus Christ's throne. And the throne of David shall be established before the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Jehovah. That's Jesus' throne. That's Jehovah. That is Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. Why? Forever. Who is going to sit on the throne of David forever? David died. He's already dead right now. He's in the sepulcher. And as Martha would say, he stinketh. Acts chapter 2, Peter says he's corrupting. Solomon's going to die. Rehoboam's going to die. There's only one that will live forever that will sit on that throne, that Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And Luke chapter 1 says it's Jesus. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada. Now, Benaiah, every time he's mentioned, he's mentioned with his father. It's like the Holy Spirit wants it. Benaiah, that's, that's, the, that's, his, that's the son of Jehoiada. Don't get mistaken with that one. Benaiah, the son of it just points it out why, I don't know. But we got that classification of who Benaiah is, the son of Jehoiada. And when this guy is called into the throne room by Solomon, I bet you the kingdom shakes. Did you hear he called Benaiah the son of Jehoiada? <laughs> yeah, the one who's going to die now. He killed Abiathar. He got rid of Joab. He's now the commander in chief of all the military forces. I heard Shimei was, it was in the kingdom just before him. Ooh, Shimei going to get it. But now you're going to kill him. Which went out. So between 45 and 46, Shimei is taken out or he has removed himself from the throne of David. You're not going to execute this man before the king. You're not going to do it on the floor before the, the, uh, the, the throne. You're not going to do it in the throne room. Usually of all the times they do it, they take the person out they put a, a, a veil over his head and they take him out in the courtyard. Let's see. Esther. Esther. I gotta find this one real quick. They don't do it right there to the king. Esther. Esther chapter 7 looks like. Where I want to start. Verse 8, Esther 7, 8. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine. So here is a big dining hall for the king. And Haman was fallen upon the bed wherein Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in this house? King's angry. Solomon was angry. As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. So it's almost possibility as if Shimei is still there, man, they cover his face. You're not allowed to see the king no more. You don't have that mercy and grace. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And Harbaleth, one of the chamberlains, before the king, behold, also the gallows 50, 50 cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who has spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, hang him there. So they hanged Haman on the gallows. So they, they took Haman out and hung him on the gallows. I guarantee if Shimei is still there, Benaiah is like, come. We're going. You're going to death. We're not doing it here. Which went out. Couldn't Shimei go into the king and say, king, I'm not supposed to leave. I just had two of my servants run the gap. You're wise. 
What shall I do? Could have done that. He couldn't got anybody else in his house. He couldn't get one of his neighbors to say, hey, I'll pay you if you go to Gath and get those two men for me. I can't go. Some people know why, some people know, but just believe me, I can't go. I need somebody to go for me. Or I need attendance with the king because I got a situation here. Or let him go. I'll get two others. They don't want to be faithful to me. I'll get two others. Oh, he left. There were quite a bit of possibilities for Shimei. There were quite a bit of uh, abilities for Adam and Eve. How many other fruits could they have picked from? I'll give you an idea. Walk in the produce section of your grocery store. Go to a season ripe, which I mean where everything is there. At that one part of the season where all the fruits are there. And walk to a farmer's market and see what all the fruits and vegetables you got there. You realize Adam and Eve, have, I don't know how many fruits there are. I'm not talking about science, sciently engineered and messed up. But what God had provided fruits and vegetables. One fruit caused Adam to die. One fruit. Of all the fruit. Beans. All the beans there are. I don't know how many beans there are. They say there are apple. They say you can eat one variety of apple every day and you would you would have to eat five years, something like that. Again, I don't know about scientific modification and all that. I'm just talking about natural. Oranges, bananas, pears, peas, tomatoes, potatoes. Spinach, yeah. Strawberries, blueberries, nuts. Yeah, there were nuts in the Bible before people came along. All them. If I could give you a number, I wish I could give you a number. But let's just say a thousand. And there's more than that. One. One fruit. Of, I can't even say a thousand. I don't know. Shimei, two men, two men cause him to die. Disobey God and disobey the government. It's serious what sin will do to us. That one sin makes us sinners. And it usually happens at an early age. And I'll tell you what one of those two sins are that we know. I'm not talking about, you know, crying all night to keep your parents up. Talk about what you acknowledge. The first one could be, and it could be one of two, if not at the same time. I didn't do it. And you did it. You lied. You lied to somebody. Every child does that. I did that. Sometimes I remember some of the lies I lied to my parents. Number two, I definitely did this as a child. You took things that were not yours and didn't get permission. Those are one of the two things that every child does at that moment. And then when you hide that thing you stole from your parents and lied about, it, you're a sinner. You know you sin. That thing when, did you do this? And you had to lie, say no or yes. You knew you were covering up your guilt. That's a sin. One or two. One and two as far as we can go back in our earliest life that even if we don't remember. There's one or two sins that focus upon every human being. They either lied or they took something. Simeon has two men. Adam had one fruit. Jesus had 12 men. One of them sold him out. It's 
not in the vast number. There was opportunity for Simeon to do something else, not Shimeon. There was opportunity for Adam and Eve to do something else. And that happens in our life. We are come across, when it comes to our sins, we have one or two options. And only one or two. I am not going to do it. Or I'm going to do it. And that could be yay or it could be nay. Not doing it could be good and praising God. But also not doing it can also be against God, depending on the situation. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, which went out, fell upon him, and he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Okay, so Solomon has set forth the standard. Don't you dare cross his nation. Don't you dare cross his throne. Don't you dare murder anybody. Don't you dare have any false souls with God. But we're going to see the sins of Solomon, Lord willing, next time.